Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. Thanks so much for joining me here. And uh, it's June 29th. Uh, in a moment, we're going to take a look at the smoke map briefly before I get into this uh, radio gear. But today, what I'll be doing is testing the uh, vacuum tubes in this radio. Yesterday, when I played the radio, uh, to me, the radio was weak. I had to have the volume turned all the way up to get anything out of it. And I could hear some distortion in the sound, too. So both those could be caused by a weak tube. So I think we need to right away eliminate the possibility of that being the case. <clears throat> yeah, choking here. I shouldn't be choking. The air here is very clear today. But let's take a look at the uh, smoke map here briefly. So I have some interesting uh, information I uh, <coughs> looked up yesterday and just be aware I could easily be wrong about the things I'm about to say. But here's my situation. So I live right where the hand is here right in this area you can see clear air and in fact this morning this is uh, this is seven o'clock this morning according to this map uh, and it's now uh, 8 eight thirty in the morning uh, I went outside I could see blue sky the Sun looks normal it looks like a normal day with just a tinge of haze that you could easily attribute to uh, just uh, moisture in the air but maybe it is a little bit of smoke but uh, compared to yesterday the sky is blue yesterday the sky was kind of a white color so that's great. Um, fortunately, as time goes by, I'm going to get into more and more smoke here. So this is now uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and so we'll be under smoke again, unfortunately. But not nearly as bad as, oddly enough, large areas of the United States, which are picking up, look at this, right around here, right around New York, a substantially heavy blast of smoke here. Uh, kind of cut off from the fires and just drifting on its own now. So yesterday I got quite nervous here. I looked at this map up close and I saw the size of this and the size of this and I thought oh my gosh like are all the forests in Canada burning away? Now Canada is, is a large forested area starting way up here and just coming all the way through here all the way through and up out here. It's just huge forest here. We have a significant portion of the world's forest in our country. The United States is not the same. The United States, lots of forest over in this area, but pretty, pretty, not a lot here and not so much here anymore. I, so really the huge forest band is up here, boreal forest. It's like, oh my gosh, it's like 15% of it burning away this year. So I took a look for some numbers, and this is where I could get this wrong, of course. So just to get some numbers, first there's, I hope I got this right, 350 million hectares of forest. And what's burning, what's going to burn this year, is somewhere in the range, and I don't know what, I don't want to say that number. And a typical year, oh, I think I've forgotten these numbers, it's something like a million uh, hectares burnt. So 1 million out of 350 million is not very much. This year, I think they expect 2.5 million. Again, I might have these numbers all wrong. Again, 2.5 million is you know, a little under 1%, something like that, of the uh, forest here. So no, Canada is not burning away. It's not what's happening. Typically in a year, a typical year here in Canada, and I fell over when I saw this number, we have 8,000 forest fires spread across the country. Uh, so many of them obviously are very small. The vast majority are never ever, uh, and no one goes to try to put them out or anything like that. I mean, how can you? 8,000. We don't have that many guys fighting forest fires, <laughs> let alone, you know. So, uh, so that's the story here in Canada. Lots of smoke this year. More, maybe, maybe double the amount of fire than normal. And uh, it's probably the case that in previous years I've looked up in the sky and seen the grayness and thought it was cloud when in fact it was uh, high level smoke and it, didn't, it just wasn't of any interest to anybody so there wasn't any reporting on it. So I probably experienced stuff like this. Well, maybe not as bad as this year, but no, I've, you know, I'll take that back. I've never gone outside and smelled sm uh, smoke before uh, from forest fires till this year. So that, that's definitely a difference. 
Okay, enough on the uh, fires here. Well, look at all these numbers down here. In the United, see, the United States is not free of fires. Look at this area. There's 29 forest fires burning here, 23 here, 10 down here, 10. You know, there's lots of forest fires going on in the United States, too, which isn't helping matters, I'm sure, for the, for the United States. Let me zoom in here. There's the two fires there. How, how big these are, I don't know. Who, who knows? Okay, enough on the fires. So I have spent some time trying to find information about this radio, and the, the problem I'm having is I, I can't identify this very easily. Um, I'll, I do have a photo of it. I don't have the cabinet here, but I have a photo of the, and it was sent to me. It'll take, I'll just show it to you on my phone here. If the uh, there's funny clicking on the video, it's because uh, my phone is in here. I'm just going to show like that. That's what it looks like. I got another photo here. Yeah. So part of the uh, the things that make this radio stand out are these vertical white lines in the cabinet. That's kind of unusual. The center knob here is not a round knob. It's a pointed. It's one of these uh, triangular shaped pointing knobs. That's a little different. But many, many, many Philco radios have this kind of a. Uh, Call that a use station? Is that the word for that? This kind of a, of a thing here, and a similar dial in behind it. So I, I think this is a number 37 dash something. I think the 37 means the year. Uh, you know, I'm stupid about Philco stuff. Uh, so this would be a 1937 radio, and then the model number follows. And I'll read it out here best I can see. Excuse me for showing the back of my head to you. So what it says here is 37-3610A. Uh, the 37 is painted and the other numbers are stamped. So they must have made up a bunch of these stickers for the year 1937. They're stickers, these plates. And they just printed on the 37. And then the actual radio is, is stamped in here. What is that number again? 3610A. But it didn't help in the end. Okay, we're going to test these tubes. Let's, uh, which way should we go? Let's stay away from these for now. We'll do the easier guys. We'll start maybe right with the output tube. And uh, uh, I'm just going to stop here and get a cloth. Andy. Okay, now I have two cameras on this. One, you, this one here, you can't read the scale properly, but this one you'll be able to see the scale on it. Okay, so I have this set for the tube. Let's just do the double check thing here. 6F6, no doubt about that. Okay, looking here, 6F6, 6.3 volts, 2 on the signal level, 46H. For high, 27345, 27345, 610. Oh, 0, 610. I made a mistake. 34, that's why I double check this stuff. And F for the plate connection. Okay, so the reject point, if it doesn't get any higher than 830, which is about, about here then it's time to sell a new tube. Okay, we'll pop it in. Give it a moment. So the next test is a short test to see if there's any shorts between the elements in the tube. So you can't see the switch, but you can hear it. Now, as long as this doesn't travel away, if going up a little bit like that doesn't matter. All tubes show that way on this tube tester. If it were bad at any one of those clicks, it would have come up scale a fair bit, so it's not. So now we're ready to throw the transconductance test. Number 830 was about here. So you could not, it, it, it'd be unreasonable to think this tube is responsible for a quiet radio. It's, it's in good, pretty good shape, actually. Output tubes uh, work very hard and like this one and they tend to wear out 
ahead of the other tubes, which are not working very hard, except for the rectifier tube. The rectifier tube is also a hard working tube. I'm going to skip the rectifier tube. We're going to go to this one here. I'm guessing the rectifier tube is probably okay, simply because the radio worked. Oh, I wish I had a schematic because one of the things I like to do is double check that these are the correct tubes, but the chance of it being wrong is very low. Very, very low since the radio operated. This is a uh, can't read it tube. This is a 6A8G. Okay, 6A8. Yeah, put, it, put it on the bench carefully. Right beyond there. 6A8. Very, very common tube. These older radios, very old, the 1930s radios. 6A8. 6A8. A8. 6.3, signal level 1. Bias is 20 low. 27345, 27345, 4610, 4610, 32, plate is on C, 750, this time grid cap, pull tube tested in, in this test. Double checking, 120L27345, 27345, 4610, 4610, 32, C. Okay, let's see. There's two basic types of tube testers. One is like this type which uh, can, uh, is sensitive to the ability of the tube to amplify. We could put it that way. Uh, it measures a factor called the transconductance, which is like a negative resistance in a way. So often they have the words like dynamic on the tube tester, or here's this mutual conductance tube checker. Uh, to indicate that it's that style of tester as opposed to the other one. The other kind of tester is called an emissions tester and just checks to see if current will flow through the tube and how much current will flow through the tube. But whether the tube's amplification is normal, it, it won't know. Uh, either tester is pretty effective at finding really bad tubes. No doubt about that. Here we go. Any shorts in this tube? So I wouldn't expect any shorts because the radio worked. What? We need to do that just to protect the tube tester, in fact. So the throw it away point on this one is 750, which is which is right here. No, not throwing this one away. Very good. Okay, the next one, I think I'll do I'll do the uh, rectifier tube next. Rectifier tube. I think it's a 5Y3. You don't want to pull on the glass bulb or they get loose. This one's loose. Can you see them? Not only is the glass turning, they go all the parts inside which are embedded in the base of the glass um, are also turning. But what isn't turning is the pins pins are stuck in the base. The base is glued on to the glass with some glue in here you can't see. Cement and that is that is given way. The tube is not wrecked. It is not necessarily it's not necessarily filled with air because the glass bulb is continuous. Uh, on its own, this is this is attached. So there is a point where the tube in the manufacturing process is just a glass bulb with all the stuff inside and wires hanging out the bottom. And then they fit this on with glue. The wires come down into the pins and they solder them into the pins in some way. So if the, these things get loose because people grab them by the bulb 
and, and the glass and try to pull them out. Okay, but there's no reason to think the tube is bad because the radio worked. But let's see how good it is. So I'm going to stop here for a moment and get my coffee going here. Okay, I think we're all ready now. This this tube is actually kind of like two tubes in one. You see, there's a, like a left side and a right side to it. There's actually like two separate tubes in here. This becomes a full wave uh, rectifier. It can be put into a circuit. That's a full wave rectifier. So this is a four y four y three five y four four y three. <laughs> I, okay, I've only had a little bit of coffee so far. So five y four. Let's double check here. 5Y4. So the voltage on these tubes is 5 volts, interestingly enough. 0030P. 0030P. 0760. Oh, 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 oh. 5Y4. Oh, my eye dropped down. I put the wrong numbers in. 0760. Even I have trouble seeing these. Zero, seven, six, zero. That's why I like to double check this stuff. 25. And is that an E or an F? That's an E. E. Okay, just one more time. Quick. 5 volt. 5Y4. 5Y4. 0030P. 0030P. 0760. 0760. Okay, I think we're good now. Pop this guy in. Okay, so this is a hard working tube also in the sense that it runs very hot and conducts quite a bit of current. Uh, but I believe, and I could be wrong, there's no cathode in this tube. The electrons are emitted right off the heater. But you can see the heaters here. Can you see them? You can't really see them, but I can. Okay, here we go. Oh, let me just change the cameras here. Here we go. Now, there's a note here, note F. Note F means when I click it to this setting, it should go all the way over, which it did. That's normal for this tube. Very good. Now, we're going to test a rectifier here. Can, uh, can you read that? You can read it. Diodes okay and rectifiers okay. So it just has to get up into this zone here to be rectifier okay. There we go. So it's within the zone, but barely. But that's okay. This is no way this would be responsible for a quiet radio. There's, there's no way. Okay, that's good. Now, I'll just pop this back in. Now, the challenge is let's take a look at the situation here. These last two tubes. Uh, Shields. These are split shields. There's a split down them, and there's a ring locking them in place. Um, let's start with this guy because he's easiest to get to. Pull this up. Looks like this shield goes all the way up over the cap, but this one doesn't. Did it really need it to do that? Okay, so these um, you can ruin a tube taking these off. If they're sticky at all, and you do what I was doing, twist them, you can, again, break the glue in here, and you're on your way out. So I'm going to try to kind of use a little wedge help here. So I don't do that to it. And we're going to take this ring. The split is on the back here. I'm going to catch it with my fingernail. Shoot it upwards here. Let go. There we go. Set 
Well, the thing about these shields, I didn't mention it is, uh, just now, but they're uh, they're soldered in here. So I'm going to try to leave one half of the shield behind if I can do it. Goat, goat, G-O-A-T, goat. Patent pending. I wonder if he got his patent. I think I can get this tube out of here without. Okay. I think I can. Okay, I can't pull it up, so I'm gonna wedge it up from below. There we go. There it is. Very good. And what do we got here? Here we've got a 6Q7, made in Canada. Okay. Let's just go over here with it. Can't use those tools on it. Gotta use this one. 6Q7. Dial it up. How's that alphabet work again? L-M-N-O-P-Q. Q-R-S. Q-Q-R. 6-Q-7. There it is there. Oh, there's two lines for this two. Just double checking. 6-Q-7. 6-Q-7. So here we go. 6.3 heater volts. Signal level 1. 23L for the bias. Two seven three zero zero. Two seven three zero 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 six one zero zero six one zero thirty. To get the meter to read right, and F. And the plate connection is grid cap required. Should I double check that? I should. I should. I should always do that. 6Q7, 1, 23L, 27300, 27300, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0610, 0, 0610, 0610, 30. F. She's good to go. Put on the grid cap. The grid. moment to warm up. Now, I just acquired another tube tester. Someone actually donated a tube tester to me. I've done nothing with it. It's just sitting in the other room. But maybe at the end of this video, I'll just bring it in. We'll just take a peek at it. And I don't think I want to try operating it just yet. Okay, tube should be warmed up. Are there any shorts? Oop, let's switch cameras here because you can't see what is happening. And how about I pull this out too? Let me just. <laughs> Funny things are happening, but you don't know about them. Okay. 780. So again, kind of, kind of low on the dial, right around here. No shorts. Way above 780. Way above. So this is a gloriously good tube, according to this tube tester. My experience with tube testers, the ones I have, is uh, they all work quite well, and uh, they all they all do what they say they do, and they all give similar results. Although the, uh, the the number that's coming up there is not necessarily exactly the transconductance number. It's come like that 780 uh, or whatever the meter reads there's often a multiplying factor that has to be applied I'm a little bit in the dark here as I turn the lights down I'll put this guy back in because you know if I have two tubes on the bench at the same time there's really like a 80% chance I'll get them mixed up so that's in okay now we'll 
try to do this one, do the same thing. And we have to get rid of the uh, spider here. Okay, we get the grid cap to come off. The grid cap connection. I don't want the grid cap to come off. Oh, this is a little loose. This will come off. This is going to come off easy. It's loose, a little loose. Same thing, we'll try to pop the uh, this ring up. Where's the split? The split is on the back again. Okay, you're in my way. Move over here. I don't feel the split. I don't feel the split. Well, let's just see if we can just kind of force it off here. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not with this. Something smaller? Can I do it with something like this? There's a split right here. The split is right here. Hold on to back there. If the uh, if these weren't soldered in here like this, then I wouldn't. I would just pull the whole thing out and then take the uh, take this off. There we go. Got the ring off. One of these out. Okay, are these identical? Not at all. No, I already noticed this one goes up high and actually covers the. The top there, so I can't mix them up. That's why I want to know. Okay, come out, Mr. Tube. Okay, I, I gotta wiggle it by the glass <laughs> just to get it started a little bit. With this, I can't get the screwdriver underneath. Oh, let me see what's going on. Wow, it's really tight between the two cans here. Come on out of there. There we are. I got it. Marco. Mar Marconi. <laughs> Marco. Uh, Marconi. It's a replacement tube, I'm pretty sure because it's different than the others. K, a 6K7 tube. Okay. Come on over here. Now we're in the darkness over here. Okay, let me just turn on my big light again. What did I say it was? 6K7, wasn't it? Now, see, these are three have three digits in their name. Three digits in their name. Uh, later tubes that replaced these had four digits. They added an S. So the be so this is a 6K7. The later version is a 6SK7. Now you can't swap them. Uh, pretty, pretty sure you can't can't just swap them. But uh, the S means single-ended, and what they did was they got this, they got rid of this, and made the connection just on a pin on the bottom. Okay, I can look at it all day, it's not going to do anything. 6K. Okay, 6K7. 6.3 volts, signal level 2, 33L. One seven three four two. One seven three four two. Zero six one zero zero six one zero. Forty three. Get the meter right. D. Okay. 
and uh, double checking. 6K7 to 33L. 17342 17342 0610641043 and D great cap there we are time. So, so far we've found no explanation for why the radio is quiet. So, if it's going to be a tube, it's going to be this one. Okay, should be warmed up enough. Watching the meter now for shorts. Can you see there's actually, it says, it says leakage here, and you can actually see 50,000 100,000, 200,000. This is showing the uh, leak resistance in in the uh, in the radio. Oh, okay. How do you like that? I don't like that. That's on setting number two. I don't think that's normal. There's no note here. I think we found a bad two. 6K7. Wow. How many of these do I have? Well, we cannot continue the test. Because if there's a short in the tube, you run the risk of damaging your tube tester. We put it into another tube tester and double check, but this is a very reliable tube tester. I, I've done lots of tubes in here. I've never had had any question arise about its function. If you find another 6K7, stick it in there and then compare it. Now, here's where my tube collection comes. My tube collection index and sorting system comes to the fore. I will hunt down as 6K7. Well, I don't, at least I don't have easily accessible a glass version of the 6K7, but I have a metal version of the 6K7. It looks entirely different, tiny size in comparison. It says 6K7 on it. This says 6K7G. Look in my tube substitution book. 6K7, 6K7G can be replaced with a 6K7. I'm pretty sure that's the case. I just thought I would check to be sure. My tube tester has only one notation, 6K7. There's no 6K7G. Let's take this out of here. Yeah, take it out. Yeah, this could explain why the radio is quiet. Effective too. Put that guy in. I saw the pilot light flip. So I previously tested this tube. Uh, most most of the tubes, the tubes that are in my registered collection are all tested. Now they aren't necessarily all really good. Uh, just as long as the heater heated and some current flowed and they weren't really dead, I have them in my collection. Okay, so I think we're ready to try this guy. Now let's just see if that short shows up again. Uh, maybe it's a fluke in the tester. So here we go, short testing. Three, two, right over again. Hmm, why, uh, why, why, why? No, there's no note in here on the 6K7. Well, they're both behaving the same way, so I'm going to just have to assume it's really the tube tester. We'll continue the test with this. That looks fine. Let's just do it for real now. 1,070, so up up over the 1,000 mark. Okay, so there's a goodie. Now, can I pop that in, do away with the shields, and uh, we're in better shape than using the original? Let's put the original in and finish the test. Don't know what's going on with my tube tester here. Maybe we need to check with another tube tester and see if it behaves the same way. Or is this a fluky thing in this tube tester? And, or if I got something wrong. You know, hey, there's a possibility. I got something wrong. Let's just go over it again. 6K7, 2, 33L. The big deal are these. Here we go. One. 
1-7-3-4-2. I'm speaking loudly. 0610. 061. How did I do that? Okay, I have a mistake there. Uh, I gave an even double checking. This is terrible. I should triple check from now on. Let's try it now. Now we're cooking. Okay, the whole thing was just me. This is K7. Grid caps on. Let her rip. It's gotta go over the thousand mark. That's good. We'll put the original tube back in. And what has happened here is I have eliminated tubes as a possibility for difficulties with this radio. So the issue has to be something else. Tubes are not the cause. Now if you get an old radio like this, and you think the best thing you can do is run out and buy a whole new set of tubes, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do it unless you have a, you know, an indication or a reason. But I have had people present me with a radio with a box of tubes they bought on the internet. That, you know, the tubes in the box are no better than the ones in the radio. So don't don't rush out and do that. Okay, I'd say probably. I won't bother putting the shields on here for now. Probably half the radios I work on have a, have a weak tube that really should be changed out. Maybe, maybe a little less than half. This guy goes back in my collection. He's number 13. He goes back in the collection. And I think that's it for today. I don't think I want to do... Yes, I'm going to take a look at that other tube tester. Since it's a tube testing day, I will go get it. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, this was a donation. So I guess I just don't want to throw these things out, so they donated. Pretty marked up box. It's small. It's a fairly small one. You know, for the service service guys coming into people's homes, they don't want to bring in a great big tube tester. Oh well, yeah, I guess this is a great big tube tester, isn't it? <laughs> small, small by tube testing standards. Something rolling around inside of it. This is a precision. Made by the Precision Apparatus Company Limited in Elmhurst, New York. And I don't know what that is, LI? I'm not sure what that is. USA. Got a nice little uh, micrometer there. That looks like a signature. What's that? Standards. Standard of accuracy. I have one other uh, precision sticker here, probably an ownership sticker. CSA approval number. CSA is Canada Canadian Standards Association. Let's just look at what this says. That says E.D. Smith Radio and TV. Oh my God, really? E.D. Smith Radio and TV. And something or other street somewhere in Ontario. Unfortunately, it's damaged. I can't read where it was. So E.D. Smith. You know, E.D. Smith makes ketchup. They make ketchup and they fixed radios. <laughs> I don't quite understand that. Yeah, well, you never know what happened in the past. Now look at this cool thing. What's this? A crank. A crank that gets interfered with. That's amazing that this is still sticking out the side of this box after all these years. And now we look inside. What do we got here? So I want to thank you to whoever dropped this off. Unfortunately, I've, I've got I've got no name. I got nothing now. I don't. I can't contact them back and say thank you very much for dropping this off for Jim's radio. So they included a photocopy of the manual. Ooh, that's a long manual. Whew. That's a long manual. Wow. 
element distribution lever switch. It has an element distribution lever switch in it. And let's just take a look at the thing itself. Pretty interesting looking. A little different than my other. All these two testers are a little different. Uh, what kind of things we got? So we got all the places to plug tubes in. Lots of different ones. We have a blank one. So when the next tube came along, you could insert the new socket in there. And I guess you would get instructions on how to wire it into everything underneath here. These things have a batch of wires underneath, and all these switches are all tied together. But in terms of electronics, there's very little in, in these kinds of guys, these, and in these tube testers. Line adjustment, noise test, uh, con 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 test. Uh, conduction test, battery test. So it's kind of a universal tester. So you can so we don't have to carry around five pieces of equipment. Carry around this tube spec tube and this must be special you flip it there and maybe these things start working I don't know I don't know yet battery test one one setting that's battery test a B C probably uh, D E F what's this guy we don't know what C and B really are. Could just be switching between pins here. I don't know. This is a snap switch. This is a vernier. Can I call it that? This says uh, filament fill ret. Same thing here. Fill filament. I don't know what the ret part is. Open test normal. Oh. I'm normal. <laughs> nice switches. Lovely. That's a little loose. That's a little too loose there. Okay, and uh, we have this thing here. I'm not so sure what you do with that. There it is. Maybe it's related to this kind of tube. This is a really weird tube socket here. I actually have one tube. That will go into that socket, but I, I, I doubt it's a good tube. So, the short check is a neon light. We've got the uh, line off, line off. We have a fuse sitting right here. Slow blow flu fuse, and it's in good shape. I better read its value here, because often people stick the wrong size fuses into these things. This one is a made in the USA. This fuse is a one amp, three one three. One amp slow blow. There's the uh, test button. It says read meter. Oh, what happened there? That popped up. Line off. Oh, this is for measuring the line, making a line adjustment. So you, you do that, adjust this to bring it up to this line here. That's to compensate for the wild voltages that people had in their homes back back in the day, I guess. Excuse me. But then when you go to read the meter, you can't have this down. So it pushes it up. You read the meter. And what does the meter say? Tube and battery tester. Replacing good. And it has a 0 to 100, like a percentage. It has a uh, replace down. Down here, this would be for diodes. Diodes, good. Over here it says special. Some, uh, special. Special. Precision Apparatus Company, Incorporated, Elmhurst, New York, Series 6112. Yeah, this is a Series 6, I didn't read this, Series 6, 612 tube and battery tester. So what, 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 what's the big deal on battery testing with radio repair? Because of battery-operated radios. 
So if you come in, the guy, oh, my radio's not working. Well, maybe his battery's dead. So he whip out this big thing, because when he sees this, he's going to pay you more money. And you do all this stuff. And you go, hey, your battery's dead. Here's a new battery, 40 bucks. Well, I don't know if it would be 40 bucks. It has a nice roll chart. See, that's what the crank is for. Oh, look at the crank protector is up on the lid. So when you open up the box, the protector disappears. You don't have that interference anymore. How clever. Stop! Okay, I'll stop. Anyway, it just let's show short on one to six. Cathode short test, throw one to six together. Let's show short on two five. Grid short test, throw two five together. Wow, was it full of instructions like that? Oh, it does seem to be. Every time you turn around, there's more instructions. So this would be a difficult to operate tube tester. Uh, you saw the size of the manual. Somebody would have to learn and you know, study quite a bit. But in the end, you probably, if you're a radio, ooh, what happened there? So, so the paper's going from one roll to another. And you know you can think of the dimensions of the rolls. You know when there's when no paper on them, they're small. When the paper's on them, they're big. So you got to wonder how you can roll paper from one to the other uh, without it getting too tight or too loose or something. But I'm doing it. Very nice, actually. Tons and tons of words in here. So I think as the two testers developed as time went by, they got simpler to operate and simpler to operate. And uh, I think that was a great attraction. In fact, I have the granddaddy here. Well, I don't know if it really is. A, I shouldn't say granddaddy. I have one of the most popular tube testers. It's just sitting on the floor behind me. A uh, Stark 966. Here in Canada, anyway. There's a Canadian built one. Well, there we are. Well, I have no idea if this will work. Hey, what's this? Hey, there's a tube sitting here. That's a big honker. A 2A3. Two, a two oh, yeah. Don't know why it's in there. Who knows why it's in there. There's a spot there for the cord to come out when you close the lid. But you wouldn't, wouldn't want to... Well, I guess some, in some cases you'd leave this plugged in on your bench somewhere and just open the lid when you needed it. The, these lids pop off. Almost all of them pop off pretty easily. Yeah, this one comes right off. So you get rid of it. Get it out of the way. Something written in here. 12H6. No good reading. Hey, look at this. I have another substitution book. I have like seven of these now. <laughs> yeah, hey, there's other stuff in here. Oh my. What's this? Color band for resistors. First and second significant figures. Third is the multiplier, and fourth is the tolerance. Gold and silver, 10 and 15, or 5 and 10 percent. Well, this information was hard enough to come by. Somebody, this is, this is a photocopy? This is a photocopy. So, how old is this? Can it be, can it be that old? When did photocopiers start? I don't know the answer. There's a few other. Uh, here's a uh, grid, grid cap. Fantastic. Well, this will be interesting. So at some point I'll do a video on this. I'll take it out, look underneath, see what's going on. This will, this panel will clean up really nice, I'm pretty sure. It's got some like coffee stain. Somebody spilled coffee on it or something like that. There we go. That's the... Uh, Precision Series 612. Oh. 6 fv V6. Why would they stick that there? Can you can't see what I'm talking about. 6 F V6. Maybe, maybe that tube is inside. Inside this. There often there's a tube inside here. Sometimes it's a ballast tube, sometimes it's a rectifier tube. There we go. Well, that's pretty cool. I have many tube testers now. I've made no attempt to collect tube testers, but somehow I have, and I have to keep explaining it to my wife. <laughs> why, why do you want another one of those?
Well, it's because they're cool. Actually, two, two testers are fairly valuable. Okay, that's fantastic. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, tomorrow, what I think I'll probably do with this radio is start checking voltages, the B plus voltage. We'll poke our way through the radio and see if we can find something out of sorts there. And uh, after that, who knows how I'm going to get this guy to produce some good volume and the like. Thanks a lot for watching today. We'll see you tomorrow. And, and thanks for the super thanks. See ya.